bushes and carry bacterial infection called Lyme disease, which can be transferred to humans with a bite. Well, research shows that there's, there's more of them out there than ever before, and apparently this is the worst time of year uh, to be bitten. We can discuss this further with Professor Richard Wall, who's a zoologist, who's in our Bristol studio. He's going to explain why there's been an increase, perhaps, in the number of ticks and the number of people who have been bitten. Nicola Seal, who suffers from Lyme disease, joins us on the sofa. Nicola, welcome. Let's start with you. Let, let's just talk about what happened, because you were healthy, strong, walker, keen walker, yeah. active, yeah. and then... You got bitten? I got bitten by a tick in Scotland in 2008. Um, I'd had a few tick bites before but never got sick and then this time, 13 days after the tick bites, I, I was um, struggling to walk um, and then I couldn't walk and then I had signs of meningitis. I looked very ill, sweating and feverish and chills and sort of like a severe flu. And I got admitted to hospital. Um, they tested me for Lyme disease because I mentioned the tick bite. Um, but the test came back negative, but they gave me some antibiotics anyway. Then a further test came back negative, and after the antibiotics had finished, they just said, oh, you've not got Lyme disease because the tests are negative, um, and it's psychiatric or in your head or something. And then I deteriorated and started to get really ill. I started to not be able to think pro properly, couldn't form coherent sentences, word-finding difficulties, uh, coordination problems. So I went to a private specialist who said, um, yeah, you tests are positive, private tests are positive, you have got Lyme disease, we'll treat you. And they gave me 19 months of antibiotics now. I got um, completely well for two and a half years, I was fine, went back to work as an ecologist, um, I had a baby, which was fine, and then I relapsed, which sometimes can happen in 2012, um, and I'm now being treated by an American um, doctor. But I mean, that's fine for me because I can afford to do that, but that's the issue, um, it's on the NHS, it's not really understood, mm. um, a lot of people aren't, aren't treated, and the doctors don't get really much training in it, and the tests miss a lot of cases, and it's, it's difficult to diagnose, you know, because it, it mimics a lot of Ill other illnesses, so some, some doctors think it's, you know, they misdiagnose it as ME, MS, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, um, and, you know, so we think there's a lot more people who have Lyme disease than is recorded. A lot of people don't recognise the symptoms. A lot of people won't even know what a tick looks like. No. We've got some happily uh, trapped inside uh, this... Uh, well, we're happy. I'm we're not sure happy. Yeah, happy. Yeah, well, they look happy. They're in a sort of jar um, and you can see them inside. I mean, they're tiny things. I don't know whether we, if we just put a pen in there. We can show you just how... Which, of course, there we go. Uh, there's a pen. So you can see how absolutely minute they are and yet... Those little things cause you so much damage. Yeah, yeah, one little tick, and often people don't realise they've been bitten because they're so small, you just don't notice them. Well, let's talk to um, Professor Richard Wall, who's Professor of Zoology and is with us in our Bristol studio. You know, you've been hearing, Professor, the experience of one person and how this has happened. Why are there more around, or are there more around? And what should we be doing? You know, why should, how should we be thinking about this? Because we can't really avoid them, can we? Well, certainly the, the numbers of ticks seem to have been increasing over the last few decades, and the number of cases of Lyme disease has also gone up. But I think the key message really is to remember that a very, very small proportion of the tick population have actually gotten an infection. And even if you get bitten by an infected tick, there's a relatively low chance of you getting the infection from that tick, particularly if you get rid of the tick fairly quickly. So I think the message really is that it's very important to be aware of the tick risk, be aware of these disease pathogens, but to make sure you inspect yourself after you've been walking in the countryside and try and remove any ticks that are biting fairly quickly. Can you, um, the assumption really for a lot of people is that ticks go on animals, like dogs are the ones, or cats perhaps, which have ticks, and they pass them on to us. Who, who, who are they, which animals are ticks more likely to be on, animals or us? Uh, well, it's difficult to say really. I think they will attach quite happily to either your pets or yourself. I mean, really, certainly the adult ticks are looking to feed on a large host such as deer, and the numbers of ticks is quite strongly associated with areas where there are large, large populations of deer. Um, let me show you this, Nicola. Nicola's brought this in. Um, this is this is what you use is it to, to get to get a tick off you. Yeah, that's well, a tick hook. That's the best way of removing them. You can buy them from vets or online from Lyme Disease Action. And they're a little hook with a, a niche in it, which you slide under the tick and then you twirl, and it makes the tick dizzy and it lets go without stressing the tick. 
um, and you, you, do, you don't want to um, squash them or smother them or stress them because that will make them regurgitate their con stomach contents back into make you more likely to transmit disease. So don't put Vaseline on them or alcohol or anything like that. If you haven't got a tick hook, an emergency method of tick removal is to tie a, a slip knot in a loop of cotton and put it over the tick, tighten it right at the mouth of the tick and pull upwards and that will remove it. And keep pursuing the medical professional keep, like you had to. Yeah, and wear repellent when you go out in tick habitat because that will help. And be aware and check yourself when you come back from a walk because they're in all sorts of habitats people's gardens dog walkers golfers all sorts of people could get Lyme disease nicola thank you so much for coming in and telling us your story professor richard wall thank you very much as well for taking the time out to talk to us on breakfast let's have a look at the saturday morning papers uh, shall we